And I think you should all see that. Uh, and yes, this is what I'm going to be sharing with you today. I'm going to be sharing uh, my conversation that I had with AI about teacher development uh, in the age of artificial intelligence. And there's many questions that I asked um, AI, things I wanted to know, but these are things that I, these are the questions that I've been asking all along. I really didn't start to do this in the beginning because I didn't know how to work with AI. Uh, and I worked with a group of teachers. We would meet twice a week uh, and uh, we just started to play with it uh, inside of a computer room uh, where all of us had our own station. We would sit and brainstorm uh, how we were gonna work with AI for that session. Uh, we always met for three hours to see what we could come up with and learn as a group how to work with AI uh, and sort of feel a sense uh, of independence as we were growing and developing uh, our skills with working with AI. So that part of my personal development is, is way behind me. Uh, and I've just you know, because at the same time all of this was happening, uh, we were getting more and more platforms out there, artificial intelligence platforms. Yes, I did start with ChatGPT, but that is, like I said, long ago. It seems like almost 10 years now, but it's only been like 18 months, actually, because uh, the world has changed so much when it comes to artificial intelligence. Uh, so we got to take that into consideration when we're working with artificial intelligence. And I would like to say that the first question we need to ask ourselves are, what is our attitude towards working with artificial intelligence? Because that is going to shape our uh, 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 the way we either integrate that or not integrate that. Uh, but our attitude is one thing, but if we can get past some of our biases about what we think about AI, the next question we need to ask ourselves is how can artificial intelligence support my teacher education? Uh, because this is what we're really talking about here and, and a few other things. Uh, so that's the question I asked myself and I had my own personal answers, uh, but I just asked, artificial intelligence. And this is what artificial intelligence told me. So is artificial intelligence telling me something new when I ask the question about teacher development with artificial intelligence? Uh, is it only confirming what I already know? Uh, or is it telling me something I didn't know before? And those things that it's telling me that I didn't know before, are they true? Uh, well, to be honest with you, this is actually a very short, condensed list of the responses that were generated by artificial intelligence. When I asked the question, how can artificial intelligence support teacher education? And I used the platform Bing Copilot, by the way, which is where I'm at now with artificial intelligence. Uh, and of course, I use a few others, but I don't use ChatGPT anymore. It's very rare that I would go to that platform. So Bing Copilot said to me that AI can support teacher education in several ways, including personalized learning. We as teachers have a plan for ourselves. We should have a plan of what we want, our bucket list uh, of what we want to learn and maybe need to learn uh, for our own personal development. So AI can help us with that. Uh, and it can also help to increase our productivity and help to save time. Uh, because sometimes we, as teachers, we see ourselves as busy people. But if that's the case and you see yourself as busy people, you need to ask yourself, what are you doing about time management? Well, AI can help you with that. And I can truly say that I spend about one tenth of the time that I did before. So 
uh, for every eight hours or 10 hours that I was using to plan my classes, I can say it takes me about maybe one to two hours now to do that planning. And I can use all that time that I'm saving for other things that I need to be doing, uh, which is also tailoring my learning. Not only do I have a bucket list and I'm trying to work with time management, uh, but I also have to tailor my own personal learning. Uh, and this is something that AI has helped me to do as well. I had a personal goal, and that was to redo some of the lesson plans that I had. And how could AI help me to do that and change those and update those, modernize them, move them to online learning? Uh, so this is something that AI helped me with. So I was able to tailor my learning, not only personalize it, but tailor it. Uh, and AI also said that uh, it could help to automate organizational tasks like grading assessments and providing a, a, a seed a seat feedback. Yes, I never thought that AI would help me to even design a room, uh, help me to do seating plans in the room, uh, help me to do all these things, and also help me to uh, give feedback in the room. And it also allows me to work more directly with students, which helps me to optimize the time that I'm spending with each student. And I, I can see that change in the way I teach with, uh, in the classroom, I teach mostly online, but I do teach face-to-face -face as well, but mostly online. And I see that I've changed since I've been using AI and the approaches that I take in the classroom uh, and another thing that I also notice uh, about myself is that I'm, when I am spending more time with students because of AI, I'm, help, I'm able to work with students in a more personal way and help them uh, to, to support them in their own personal development. Uh, and this is something that maybe I wasn't doing as much as I should have been doing, but AI has helped me to really develop in that way as well too. And I would like to say that, and this is something that AI added to the conversation, is let us not forget that AI can also help us to create valuable insights into student learning uh, and in increase efficiency uh, by creating a formative assessment loops. Uh, but you have to ask AI that, and you have to know that formative assessment is part of learning. So what we already know about ourselves, how we teach uh, and how our students learn and how we integrate assessment and the different types of assessment into uh, conversations that we have with AI, how, they can how AI can help us to do that, that's also important. But if you don't know about that, AI can help you with that too. Well, another thing that I asked AI is why should I integrate AI into the learning journey of students? What did AI say when I asked that? And I see that I formulated the question a little bit different here, but what should, why should students integrate? I meant why should students integrate AI into their learning journey? Uh, because that's also important, not only why I should as a teacher, but why should students, okay, uh, integrate AI into the classroom? Uh, and this is another thing that I was afraid about in the beginning, but not only do I do it, I do it a lot now, uh, and it cannot be avoided because my students already know about AI and are using AI. And I have now been using AI coming close to a year now or two semesters at the university level uh, because my students know how to, and they know it exists. They know how to use it. So why not integrate it into the classroom? But when I asked AI, why should students do integrate it? It said, it helps them to personalize their learning. Just like we as teachers wanna personalize our learning, well, students know it helps them to personalize their learning. It helps them to be more efficient uh, and it helps to automate learning. 
Uh, now, I have been working with AI tools before ChatGPT came out, and I have to say, and all of us probably already do, we just don't see it as that. Uh, but I also want to tell you that what you see here, uh, this, this frame that you're looking at here, this is important to know that while AI created this content, I did not copy and paste this content onto the frame here that you see. I used voice to text uh, function of PowerPoint to read the text into the frame and see how it compared to what AI had generated. Of course, it's the same because I was just reading what it had generated. And I changed and condensed it a little bit. I proofread it to make it what you see here already. Now, why this, some people will say, oh, don't use bullet points, don't use vertical list in PowerPoint presentations. I did this purposely so you could see how I'm working with AI, what it's generating, and how I used artificial intelligence tools like voice to text to create this PowerPoint slide. Uh, it also said, that it helps to enhance engagement. Well, this is true because I've done it already and have, like I said, been doing it for one year. Uh, it is amazing how uh, we can take the aspect of collaborative learning uh, and uh, use AI to even enhance that, make it better, make it more productive, more efficient. Uh, it works. So. This is why we should be using AI in the classroom. And this is something students already know. I was surprised how much they already knew when I started doing it. Uh, now, while some people say one of their fears is uh, critical thinking when it, and ethical use of AI, it is important for us to take that into consideration. Is what's being done in the classroom really critical thinking or is the AI platform thinking for us? Well, I think if you understand the concept of critical thinking, you would be able to see, is the student just regurgitating what AI told them, uh, or are they really thinking about it? Uh, and are we challenging the students to rethink what they see, the, the information that's been generated by AI, and are they being critical about it? And are they using you know, a, an ethical approach to that, okay, uh, when uh, bringing that into the classroom, AI into the classroom. And I think the most important aspect, because I do work with uh, young university students who have not worked before, uh, and one of my goals, because I do teach international business administration at several universities, uh, is the are we preparing our students for the future? Are we future-proofing them? And are students aware of what future-proofing is? And are they aware of how to use artificial intelligence to future-proof themselves? And how are we as teachers guiding them uh, by integrating our artificial intelligence into the classroom so that they can see that what we're learning right now is something they will need in the future. It's meaningful, it's useful, uh, and this is what's important, and this is what we call future-proofing. I used to word the, use the word a lot, meaningful content, uh, but we really need to think about, are we future-proofing our students? In summary, what it says here is AI can empower students by personalizing their learning, automating tasks, fostering critical thinking, and educators, we as teachers, should guide students in how to use AI responsibly and harness its potential for their benefit, their personal development. These are things that I already knew. What did AI do when it asked, when I asked it? And are these things correct? Well, I proofread this and I do believe those things are correct. Well, another question that I asked AI, a uh, question I had, what, what are some of the reasons teachers are cautious about using AI in the classroom? What are some of those fears or maybe biases that we have? The first thing that AI said to me was the lack of human interaction and emotional support. This could be a fear of why they don't want to use it. But I have to say that 
my experience tells me something totally different. I used AI to create lesson plans, to create scripts, uh, to create assessments. Uh, and my interaction on the human level with my students has increased. Uh, and the emotional support that I give my students has increased. So I don't feel that, at me personally, that this is a fear that I, that I maybe had in the beginning, but it's not something that I have anymore because my experience has told me and debunked the idea that AI leads to lower human interaction and lower emotional support. Totally the opposite. Uh, privacy concerns. You know, teachers are saying, I don't like social media. I don't use it uh, because of privacy. I don't use uh, uh, certain tools. Uh, well, the thing is, if you're on the internet, uh, if you're using Google and have been using Google, if you have a Google account, if you use Google Drive, if you use Microsoft products, I don't know why you're concerned about privacy because they know everything about you and everything that's on your computer. Uh, if you use WhatsApp, Facebook knows everything about you, okay? Uh, if you use Instagram, they know everything about you. Uh, anytime you log on to the internet, uh, whatever search engine you're using, they know everything about you, okay? So if you're concerned about privacy, that's something you should have been concerned about many years ago because it's, it's just not true, okay? Uh, I do have VPNs, I have firewalls, I have all these things to protect my privacy. Uh, I have very, you know, good firewalls, I would say. Uh, but that's not something that concerns me when I'm using AI uh, and is a fallacy, actually, because if you are concerned about privacy, then you better get off the internet. You better stop using social media. You better stop using Google uh, because they do know everything about you already. Uh, so that's not something to be concerned about. Ethical implications. We hear so much of people talking about the ethics of AI. Uh, and I even read a recent article that Noam Chomsky wrote about AI, uh, and it's nothing but a plagiarism tool. Well, I don't agree with that. Uh, and I want to be honest with you. Uh, yes, we come from different cultures. We might have different cultural beliefs. Uh, we also, as individuals, teachers are individuals. We are human. Uh, we have our own personal belief systems uh, that we have, and they're not going to go away. Uh, but ethics, uh, that's something we do need to consider. Uh, but I don't think that robots are going to take over the world. Uh, and I don't think that there's a conspiracy, uh, a worldwide conspiracy uh, of uh, people who are uh, going to do unethical things with AI. Uh, yes, there are some things we should be concerned about, but let's keep it simple. Uh, and when we're talking about ethics and the ethical applications, uh, implications uh, of AI, I don't think we as individuals have something to fear. Cost and development. Yes, we as teachers think, well, using it, you know, how much is it going to cost me? Uh, how much do I have to invest? Uh, well, to be quite honest with you, I've learned something already. Uh, and I've known this for quite some time. If you have a smartphone, you are probably connected to the internet. Uh, and that smartphone in your hand uh, with downloading an AI platform app is going to get you there and it's not going to cost you one red cent. It's free. Go to Bing Copilot. It's free. It's the most fabulous tool you can have for your self-development and to help you to create lesson plans. So if cost is something that's a fear or that you have, get over it because it's not it doesn't cost me one red cent. I'm not paying anything and I'm getting absolutely great lesson plans and I'm using AI in the classroom. My students love it and it's not costing us anything. 
But the biggest fear teachers have is that they're going to lose their jobs, that robots are going to replace us in the classroom. Well, there might be some truth to that. Uh, let's face what's where we're at already. And that is that uh, automation and AI tools have already replaced us in many different ways in the classroom. Some teachers just don't want to accept that. This is why I always ask, how do you teach grammar in the classroom? Why are you spending so much time with the grammar syllabus in the classroom when a student can simply go to the internet and get probably 25 million results on the present perfect or the present simple with interactive exercises that are already there? So they don't have to reinvent the wheel. So if they don't have to, and they can find those things, why are we spending so much of our time in the classroom teaching something that they can learn themselves before they come to the classroom? So yes, there are things already out there, uh, but we need to realize a robot, a computer is not going to replace us in the classroom. There will always be the human element of learning, and we have nothing to fear when it comes to our job security. But if you want a good job and you want to secure a good job, then definitely having uh, experience with AI and AI skills is something that's going to get you a better job. This is something that I believe. Let us move to something that I also asked AI about, and that was the authentication and ver verification of information that's being generated. This is something that's an important aspect, uh, and it's an important step to take when using AI-generated information. Uh, so when you're using AI platforms like me today, uh, Bing Copilot, uh, it does provide you with sources at the end of every question that you're asking it. You can see where they got that information from. And after you've had that conversation, your complete conversation with AI, I highly advise you to check the resources that they provide you with uh, to see if they're genuine and they're not something that they hallucinated uh, or AI hallucinated because I've made some mistakes and I'm very embarrassed about that. I actually quoted some things that ChatGPT had told me, uh, and I didn't check those resources or sources. And it comes to find out they had hallucinated those things. Uh, they weren't real. When I went back to check them after being told that they were not real, uh, which was a very embarrassing thing for me because I usually do check, uh, I had just assumed that AI was telling me the truth. Well, it doesn't always tell us the truth. So we have to see, and uh, there's a difference between telling the truth and hallucinating. It's a machine. So machines will only give you the input that it's been given. So is that, tr is that something I can use? Uh, was it hallucinating? We do need to verify uh, and authenticate the information that it's generating before we pass that on Take it from me, I've been there, I made that mistake, and I do now check everything that AI is doing. So that is something we also have to think about, uh, and we shouldn't forget when we're having conversations with AI, AI is to authenticate and verify the information that's being generated. Another thing that I've learned along my you know, learning journey with AI is I need to benchmark my script. Well, what does benchmarking mean? Do are we doing that as a teacher? I know I teach the uh, the concept of benchmarking in my business uh, international business administration class, uh, but what really is that? Well, benchmarking is simply a, a a concept using contrast and comparison. So we as teachers, if we're teaching language, we usually use contrast and comparison uh, to teach language. So it's really that simple. We have to contrast and compare uh, what we're, the, in, uh, the information uh, that AI is generating, but we also need to do that when we're scripting a conversation with AI. So how does our script compare 
Uh, and what, what are we comparing it to? But what do we have as teachers that we can compare and help us to develop conversations with AI? Course books. We have course books. I now see a course book in a totally different way. Uh, I see them as reference books to help me understand how they're put together. And I also use my own personal learning lesson plans that I had created before and also go to the internet and see what's available as far as lesson plans are concerned that are free. I download them. They're usually PDFs and I compare them. I compare uh, cookie cut lesson plans. Uh, and I also look at the table of contents uh, of a course book and compare them all and see what templates they're using uh, to create those. And that's going to help me to script my conversation with AI. So this is something we need to think about. Uh, and this will help you to put uh, a, a much more detailed conversation together when you're going to work with AI. So you have course books, use them. It's as simple as going to the table of contents, see how they put those chapters together. And you will see when you start comparing chapter one, two, three, four, and five, that they use a template. All material writers already know that because that's how they work. Uh, and all people who are creating lesson plans know that as well. We as teachers need to learn how to act as designers of learning experiences, and we need to create our own templates. Uh, but we need a little bit of benchmarking skills, and that means simply going to the course books that you're using, the lesson plans that you have been using, uh, and lesson plans that you can find on the internet as PDFs. Look at them, study them, and create a template for yourself that will help you to create a script to help you converse with AI. Well, I talked about course book templates, and this is something here. Again, I'll just repeat. Uh, here, I just want to say is don't try to reinvent the wheel. It's already out there. So why waste your time trying to create something uh, that you think might be new? Your goal should be to create a personal template uh, for yourself before to help you script a conversation with AI in order to generate information that you can use in the classroom. Uh, so again, grab your favorite course book, break out something to write with and something to write on, go to the table of contents, look through the table of contents that has been put together, and then compare that to the chapter itself. Remember that not all course books are put together in the same way, so it's advisable to use several course books in order to come up with a template that will suit your personal needs when creating a script to work with AI. Uh, well, you know, different schools operate and organizations operate in a different way. I highly advise, I have already been there, uh, is to create a policy at your school of how you're going to work with AI, meet with other teachers in your personal learning network or at your school to start coming up with ideas of how uh, you can create rules uh, to ethically work with AI, but also to create policies of how uh, AI is going to be integrated into teacher development, what courses can be created, uh, simple courses of just how to, in other words, how to learn to work with AI, how to, how to integrate AI into the classroom, and how to, how to teach students to effectively work uh, with uh, AI. These are some of the policies that we should be thinking about when we are working at a school with other people and with students. Uh, your editing skills will be very important. And this is something I don't want to spend too much time on. We do know what editing skills are. Some people might compare that to what proofreading is. They're almost the same in a way. They're a little bit different. But we need to learn to really uh, upskill ourselves in, the, in, in proofreading and editing if you're working with AI. You just can't accept that what it's telling you is, is true. 
uh, or is is something that you should be using in the classroom before you verify that and check to see whether those uh, facts that they're giving you are are true or authentic. Uh, something that has changed in the last three years is teachers' ICT skills. This is something I had to really, you know, really improve. Now, with Corona, we had uh, the teachers who were uh, not, didn't know how to teach online, but we're past that already. And I would say that any teacher who doesn't know how to teach online and also knows that there is a difference between teaching online and teaching face-to-face, -face, this is a skill and a skill you should be able to bring to the table. Uh, and But ICT skills, it's knowing how to work with computer hardware, uh, for example, knowing how to work with a laptop, a printer, a scanner, a projector, uh, and with interactive whiteboards, that's, that's a start. Uh, but also knowing how to work with software uh, like Microsoft Teams, Zoom, Google Classroom, Google Drive, online blackboards, uh, breakout rooms, and brainstorming tools as well. And there's so many of them out there. Uh, these are really what we need to have as teachers, uh, ICT skills. Uh, in the age of artificial intelligence, you need to really up your ICT skills. Uh, again, as an owner of a language school, I ask teachers, what are your ICT skills? And they should know what the answer to that question is. And they should be able to give me examples, examples of how uh, they use technology uh, in the classroom and use technology to help them learn as teachers and develop themselves to uh, help them uh, improve their teaching practice in the classroom. But we also need to learn how to work with electronic textbooks, uh, instructional software, uh, learning management systems like Moodle, for example, uh, how we use email and chat programs uh, in, the, in the classroom, uh, and how we use interactive learning platforms like Google Drive. Uh, this is what I look for in teachers. Are we there yet? If not, ask yourself, what are my ICT skills? Because this is very important uh, in today's modern world. Well, I'm going to, I have so many questions that I asked um, uh, chat GPT. Uh, one of them was, and this is a, you know, an important approach to how we work with uh, artificial intelligence, is how do we understand the inquiry-based approach? Uh, because uh, it's something we can't avoid. And we need to ask ourselves, uh, if we don't know what that is, I better go to uh, Google. I can, but why to go to Google? Go to Bing Copilot and ask it, what is the inquiry-based approach? And how can I use that uh, to help me uh, improve my teaching practice in the classroom? Uh, what steps do I need to take? Really do an investigative journey with AI about the inquiry-based approach, because knowing that is the basis for uh, creating great interactive and engaging lesson plans for you and your students in the classroom. So find out what the inquiry-based approach is and how you can use it to help you to create engaging lessons. In the age of AI, uh, something has become very clear. Those people who sound like they're knowledge experts, and let's face it, uh, we have a lot of people out there who say they're knowledge experts, uh, and they are. They're specialists in what they do, but AI is also a knowledge expert. AI can be your friend or your foe. Uh, you can decide what relationship you develop with AI, uh, but just know one thing, uh, that the age of being a knowledge expert in the classroom, which means teacher-oriented learning, uh, is coming to a slow and painful death uh, because of AI. Whether you want to accept it or not, uh, it's very important to know that AI can be our friend and help us to create and generate a lot of information that we in turn can turn into knowledge if we take the right approach and use the right methodologies in the classroom. So I would like to stop there. 
because I could go on and on about the many things that I've learned about myself uh, and how it, AI has uh, really helped me to develop in the last 18 months. But my goal for you today is take the chance, take the time to use AI to help you in your personal learning journey as a teacher. And in turn, the better you become as a teacher, the more benefits your students are going to have. Mm -hmm.